Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and today I'll be reading a game of Accessioner by me, so let's get into it. The soft rustling of the wind carries through the open window, blending with the quiet hum of cicadas. You sit in the corner of the small room, a blanket draped over your lap, as the dying sunlight casts a golden hue on the wall. The weight of the letter in your hands feels heavier than it should. The sound of approaching footsteps halts your thoughts. And you quickly tuck the letter beneath the blanket, your heart skipping a beat when Guy's familiar figure steps into the room. His howie flutters lightly with the breeze, his calm yet sharp eyes immediately seeking you out. You're sitting here again. Didn't I tell you to rest more? He softly chimes, walking over and crouching down in front of you, and a gentle smile curves your lips. I'm resting. His gaze lingers on you, quiet but searching. You've been distant lately. He murmurs. Is something wrong? You shake your head quickly, with your fingers tightened around the edges of a blanket. Nothing's wrong. I just... I've been thinking... a lot. What about? You hesitate, your throat tightening. How do you tell him? How do you shatter the peace that you've built? How do you shatter his dreams and hopes for the future? Life. You finally say, your voice barely above a whisper, and Gu's expression doesn't change, but you notice the slight far of his brows. He stands, moving to sit beside you on the small couch. His shoulder brushes yours as he leans back, his arms crossed. Are you sure there's nothing else? He asks quietly, his tone steady but edged with concern. You open your mouth to deny it again, but the words stick in your throat. The truth threatens to spill out, but fear keeps it trapped inside. Instead, you force a chuckle. You worry too much. Gyu does not respond immediately. The silence stretching and you can feel his eyes on you even as you avoid his gaze. Finally, he speaks, his voice firmer at this time. Don't lie to me. If something's wrong, I need to know. I can't... I can't help you if you don't tell me. He says, and he looks frustrated and concerned at the same time. Your heart aches at the raw vulnerability in his voice, and you turn to look at him. Your chest tightening as you see the worry etched into his features. Kiyo, I'm sorry. You whisper, your voice trembling, and his eyes widen slightly. Sorry for what? You hesitate, your hands trembling as you reach for the letter beneath the blanket. And slowly, you hand it to him, unable to meet his gaze. He takes it his fingers brushing yours, briefly, before he unfolds the paper. The room is silent as he reads. The only sound, the faint rustle of the letter. And when he finally lowers it, his face is pale, his eyes wide with shock. This, this isn't, tell me this isn't true. He swallows hard his voice breaking, and tears blur your vision as you shake your head. I wanted to tell you sooner, but I didn't know how. No. No, there has to be a mistake. The doctors, they're certain. You interrupt, your voice soft but resolute. There's nothing to be done, nothing that they can do to Miyaka. His hands clench around the letter, his entire body trembling. No, 
He whispers, No, I won't accept this. He reaches out, placing a hand over his. Tamiaka, please. I don't want to spend the time I have left in denial. I need you with me. Not fighting something that can't be changed. His eyes meet yours, and the anguish in them makes your heart break all over again. How can you ask me to accept that? How can I just stand by and watch you live? You say firmly, cutting him off. Not die, Gil. I want to live with you for as long as I can. And for a moment, he doesn't respond. Then slowly, his hands relax, and he leans forward, his forehead pressing against yours. I don't know how to do this, he admits, defeated, and neither do I, but we'll figure it out, but we'll figure it out, together, he whisper back, your tears mingling with his. And the two of you sit there, in the fading light of your room, holding on to each other, as if the world could disappear at any moment, and you wouldn't let go of you, because that was the only way he could reassure himself that you still had time left. He was terrified of losing you, of being alone, and he would remain so. But for now, in that moment, with his arms around you and his love holding you steady, he feels strong enough to face whatever comes next, and so does he. The world is uncertain, and even though he has no hope, because he doesn't dare to do so, at the very least he knows he's ready to accompany you. Until your very last breath. He won't leave you until then. And maybe. That will just give him the closure that he needs. And as for the rest. Surely. It will come in time. He will just try to make you happy these days. And anything else is an afterthought. <laughs>